Today, I'll be providing an overview of Citrix Global Server Load Balancing, or GSLB for short, and how implementing this technology can help your organization achieve seamless DR. Before we dive into what GSLB is, let's take a step back to understand why we need DR in the first instance. In a traditional network environment, we have our users, and we provide them with access to internal resources such as file servers, where they access their documents, web server for websites, obviously, and an exchange server for email. With the advancements of network technology, this enables us to place an edge appliance firewall to allow external users access to our internal services. External users can be in the form of external offices, users who work from home, or external partners, or even providing customers access directly to our web hosted services internally. The drawback of this setup is that if this link was to go down, our external users, partners, or customers would have no way of accessing our internal resources. This is where DR comes in. In this example, I have a active passive DR setup. We have a primary site and a secondary site. The secondary site is essentially a backup. All resources that we require will be replicated to the secondary site. If there was a DR scenario, we would redirect users to our secondary site to access resources as we would the primary. we would place an edge appliance firewall, same as we do at the primary site to allow users access to our internal resources. Although this is a great solution, it still has its drawbacks. To enable users to access resources at our secondary site, we need to update our service records. Our service records are generally hosted by our ISP or service providers and are maintained and updated externally to our organization. As you can imagine, updating these records can take time. We need to access the portals to update the records and allow time for propagation. This is where Citrix GSLV comes in to streamline this operation. There are three components to Citrix GSLB. The GSLB servers at each site, the metric exchange protocol, which is generally referred to as the heartbeat between the servers, and an authoritative DNS server, ADNS. GSLB essentially takes over name resolution duties from our ISP internet service providers. As name resolution is now controlled internally on our GSLB setup, we have the capacity to direct users to the backend file servers either in a primary or secondary site as we see fit. In a fully working scenario where both sites are up and running, name resolution can be made either at the primary or the secondary site. If a user was looking to access the file server at the primary site, but name resolution was made at the secondary site, GSLB at the secondary site would notice this and redirect the user to access the file server over here. In the event of a HA event, all links to the primary site would be down. As the GSLB service is now down, any requests coming into a file server, for example, will no longer be redirected to the file server at the primary site, but stay local. GSLB goes beyond standard HA. If we wanted to set up a rule, for example, to load balance our web servers, we could set up a rule to enable this. In this scenario, users can access the web servers from a primary site 
or the secondary site. With this setup, there's no need to redirect users between sites. This allows flexibility for HA and also individual resources. The web server, for example, is a good contender for active active between both sites. The content on web servers are generally static. This makes it extremely suitable for load balancing via GSLB. On the flip side, where a resource is hosting constantly changing data, such as the file server, we would maintain active passive failover for that resource. GSLB provides flexibility with HA and also individual services. Furthermore, if we had a Citrix Zen app Zen desktop setup, this could also be load balanced.